Hello, thank you for joining me today. Linda Lamp here. We're reading A Course in Miracles, the main text. We've been reading from chapter 22, Salvation and the Holy Relationship. And today we'll read two sections, I believe. We'll read section five and section six. Section five is the branching of the road. When you come to the place where the branch in the road is quite apparent, you cannot go ahead. You must either go one way or the other. For now, if you go straight ahead, the way you went before you reached the branch, you will go nowhere. The whole purpose of coming this far was to decide which branch you will take now. The way you came no longer matters. It can no longer serve. No one who reaches this far can make the wrong decision although he can delay. And there is no part of the journey that seems more hopeless and futile than standing where the road branches and not deciding on which way to go. It is but the first steps along the right way that seem hard, for you have chosen, although you still may think you can go back and make the other choice. This is not so. A choice made with the power of heaven to uphold it cannot be undone. Your way is decided. There will be nothing you will not be told if you acknowledge this. So you and your brother stand here in this holy place before the veil of sin that hangs between you and the face of Christ. Let it be lifted, raise it together, for it is but a veil that stands between you Either you alone will see it as a solid block, not realize how thin the drapery that separates you now, yet it is almost over in your awareness and peace has reached you even here before the veil. Think what will happen after. The love of Christ will light your faces and shine from them into a darkened world that needs the light. And from this holy place, he will return with you, not leaving it, nor you. You will become his messengers, returning him unto himself. Think of the loveliness that you will see who walk with him. And think of how beautiful will each of you look to the other. How happy you will be to be together after such a long and lonely journey, journey where you walked alone. The gates of heaven now open for you. Will you now open to the sorrowful? And none who looks upon the Christ in you, but will rejoice. How beautiful the light you saw beyond the veil, which you will bring to the light, the tired eyes of those as weary now as you once were. How thankful will they be to see you come among them, offering Christ's forgiveness to dispel their faith in sin. Every mistake you make, your brother will gently have corrected for you. For in his sight, your loveliness is his salvation, which he would protect from harm. And each will be the other's strong protector from everything that seems to rise between you both. So shall you walk the world with me, whose message has not yet been given everyone. For you are here to let it be received. God's offer still is open, yet it awaits acceptance. From you who have accepted it, it is received. Into your joined hands, it is safely given. For you who share it have become its willing guardians and protectors. To all who share the love of God, the grace is given to the givers of what they have received. And so they learn that it is theirs forever. All barriers disappear before their coming, as every obstacle was finally surmounted that seemed to rise and block their way before. This veil you lift together opens the way to truth to more than you. Those who would let illusions be lifted from their minds are this world's saviors. 
walking the world with their Redeemer and carrying his message of hope and freedom and release from suffering to everyone who needs a miracle to save him. How easy it is to offer this miracle to everyone. No one who has received it for himself could find it difficult. For by receiving it, he learned it was not given him alone. Such is the function of a holy relationship, to receive together and give as you received. Standing before the veil, it still seems difficult. But hold out your joined hands and touch this heavy seeming block and you will learn how easily your fingers slip through its nothingness. It is no solid wall and only an illusion stands between you and the holy self you are. And let's continue on, I think, till salvation and the holy relationship and section six, weakness and defensiveness. How does one overcome illusions? Surely not by force or anger, nor by opposing them in any way. Merely by letting reason tell you that they contradict reality. They go against what must be true. The opposition from them, sorry, the opposition comes from them and not reality. Reality opposes nothing. What merely is need, what merely is, needs no defense and offers none. Only illusions need defense because of weakness. And how can it be difficult to walk the way of truth when only weakness interferes? You are the strong one this seeming, in this seeming conflict, and you need no defense. Everything that needs defense you do not want, for anything that needs defense will weaken you. Consider what the ego defends for, always to justify what goes against the truth, flies in the face of reason, and makes no sense. Can this be justified? What can this be except an invitation to insanity to save you from the truth? And what would you be saved from but what you fear? Belief in sin needs great defense and at enormous cost. All that the holy sin offers must, must be defended against and sacrificed, for sin is carved into a block out of your peace and laid between you and its return. Yet how can peace be so fragmented? It is still whole and nothing has been taken from it. See how the means and, and the natural, and I'm oh, sorry, see how the means and the material of evil dreams are nothing. In truth, you and your brother stand together with nothing in between. God holds your hands and what can separate whom he has joined as one with him. It is your father whom you would defend against. Yet it remains impossible to keep love out. God rests with you in quiet, undefended and wholly undefending. For in this quiet state alone is strength and power. Here no weakness can enter, for here is no attack and therefore no illusions. Love rests in certainty. Only uncertainty can be defense, or rather can be defensive, and, on, and all uncertainty is doubt about yourself. How weak is fear and how little and meaningless, how insignificant before the quiet strength of those whom love has joined. This is your enemy, a frightened mouse that would attack the universe. How likely is it 
that it will succeed. Can it be difficult to disregard its feeble squeaks that tell of its omnipotence and would drown out the hymn of praise to its creator that every heart throughout the universe forever sings as one? Which is the stronger? Is it this tiny mouse or everything that God created? You are not joined together by this mouse, but by the will of God. And can a mouse betray whom God has joined? If you but recognized how little stands between you and your awareness of your union, be not deceived by the illusions it presents of size and thickness, weight, solidarity, and firmness of foundation. Yet to the body's eyes, it looks like an enormous solid body, immovable as is a mountain. Yet within you is a force that no illusions can resist. This body only seems to be immovable. This force is irresistible in truth. What then must happen when they come together? Can the illusion of immobility be long defended from what is quietly passed through and gone beyond? Forget not when you feel the need arise to be defensive about anything. You have identified yourself with an illusion. And therefore, feel that you are weak because you are alone. This is the cost of all illusions. Not one, but rests on the belief that you are separate. Not one that does not seem to stand heavy and solid and immovable between you and your brother. And not one that truth cannot pass over lightly and so easily that you must be convinced, in spite of what you thought it was, that it is nothing. If you forgive each other, this must happen. For it is, it is your unwillingness to overlook what seems to stand between you that makes it look impenetrable and defends the illusion of its immo immobility. Immovability. I'm going to read this last paragraph again. Forget not. When you feel the need arise to be defensive about anything, you have identified yourself with an illusion and therefore feel that you are weak because you are alone. This is the cost of all illusions. Not one, but rests on the belief that you are separate. Not one that does not seem to stand heavy and solid and immovable between you and your brother. And not one that truth cannot pass over lightly and so easily that you must be conceived in spite of what you thought it was, that it is nothing. If you forgive each other, this must happen. For it is your unwillingness to overlook what seems to stand between you that makes it look impenetrable and defends the illusion of its immovability. So again, in this section, we are dealing with, you know, what is real? What is reality? And, and this last paragraph is really very key Forget not, when you feel the need to arise, to be defensive about anything, you have identified yourself with an illusion. So everything is divinity in form. So there's nothing you need to be defensive about. It's all divinity. And when you feel the need to be defensive, then you have bought into the illusion of the apparent reality and not what's real. What's real is that we are each divinity in form. 
And that's why it says this is the cost of all illusions. Right? This belief that you're separate, but you're not. So if you'd like additional support with this section today, uh, feel free to reach out to me. You can message me at 907-351-3003. You can uh, text me there, or you can leave a voicemail, but chances are if you call, you won't catch me. Um, and you can also message me through my websites, through SoundCloud or Facebook or YouTube. So um, I hope you will join me next week for the final reading of this chapter. Uh, we will read section seven. And that's a fairly long section. So that'll be the one reading we do uh, on Sunday, next Sunday. Again, thank you so much. Namaste and much love.